Hi, this is Theodore Gashas from BotGuru.net. I'm here to show you a little bit about the secure U-Bot environment to secure your bots for resale purposes. Um, some of the things that I've shown in previous videos will show you the login system, some of the features that it has available. Um, and with this video I plan on doing the same, however, adding in uh, some of the new features that we have. Uh, to get started here, I'll go ahead and log into the online administration system, uh, which is all a part uh, of the actual admin area. And uh, when you're on the page, uh, inside your admin panel, you have different roles of users, their permissions, and so forth. Uh, the IP tracking, it'll track the IP of the users uh, as they connect from their bots and log in IP connection. This way you can see if your bots are being uh, used on multiple IP addresses. Um, it will have an option uh, to block an IP address and this way you can actually block the IP address from connecting to the secure system in case they're using it on multiple IPs. Uh, you have the current product system which will allow you to insert new products. Uh, it will also allow you to edit them so that you can edit, say, a new version number. Um, that will come in handy when I show you part of the bot here in a second. Um, product users. This will give you the actual users of a product. Uh, their hardware ID number, uh, IP address, and what they signed up with as far as an IP address. Um, as far as keys in use, what this will show is it will give the user themselves, the transaction number, the product ID number, and uh, their hardware keys. Um, it'll tell you if, in fact, it's a subscription, trial, when it expires, um, and the current status, whether or not it's active, disabled, or you can ban it as well. Going a little bit more into it, uh, you can go ahead and email all the users as well. Put in a subject and content here. I suggest it being text only. Um, there may be future updates down the road to where you'll be able to set this to uh, actually allow for HTML as well. Let me get here into uh, the actual UBOT file. Let me adjust this here. And right inside here on the UBOT file, you'll see that uh, we just go to Google. and when they first run the program what it'll do is it'll perform numerous checks and some of the first things that it'll do and you'll want to set these up and there will be a complete uh, how-to on how to install this but uh, there's only a few settings that you'll actually have to set inside of this file and attach it to your other uh, programs you'll have to set your web URL and this is a URL to the index file inside the security program where all the checks are made. You'll be able to set the version type. You'll be able to set the trial, whether yes or no, for it being a trial, which will cross-reference your database, and it will go by the time that they installed the trial. This way nothing's held locally, so nothing can be uh, altered locally on the machines, and everything's done on server side. You can also add it whether or not it's a subscription. And if it's a subscription, you would just change this to yes, much like the trial version. Uh, if selected yes, the subscription starts from the time that they install the program and it gives a timestamp. And this way it has to renew. And if they did not renew their payment subscription, and which has the new timestamp on it, it'll end up prompting them to renew their subscriptions. Um, this way you can lock down the bot uh, if they have not paid their subscription or not. Uh, number of PCs allowed. This will enable you to allow for multiple PC use or a limited amount of PC use. This way they can lock it down to one, two, three PCs or unlimited um, is what the current uh, setup allows for. If you set this to anything more than three, um, it'll allow it to be ran on multiple computers of no limit. Um, but those are just some of the features inside of this that uh, 
you'll be able to set uh, manually. Um, it will generate a config file and it'll pull in these details from the config file to pull up uh, what their purchases was and to just give you a brief idea here of what this config file looks like. You see here that it'll just simply ask them for their email address and the transaction number. The transaction number can be from PayPal, Google Checkout, Alert Pay, uh, whatever payment processor that you're going to be using it'll just ask for these two details. Um, that is the only thing that on the user end they will have to generate. However, there will be a prompt for it um, and it will let them know exactly how to format it um, and should be very easy for them to be able to do. Um, now just to give you an idea how this uh, how the testing is going when we go ahead and click play here it'll go ahead and run through the program telling us it's gathering the information it's submitting the key to the database and right now it just shows some test results that I've got uh, exporting from the program and it tells me that the transaction number does not exist currently um, as you see up here it says please double check your information submitted it seems as though your transaction number could not be found in our system. Please try again. If you feel this is a mistake, please contact support.guru.net. This email address is actually set in the configuration on the actual server. Inside the settings file, which I'll open up here for you, you'll see that inside this config file, you can set the administration email, which is what everything reports to, and you could also set the actual support email. Um, what the reports and support emails do differently is that reports, um, when you open up the program, you'll see different things like this here. This checks the key that was submitted, email, and transaction number. And if it does not exist and you have the mail setting on the settings page set to yes, then it would fire this mailing option right here which will be sent to your admin email address um, this would allow you to basically be able to check up on different reports being generated now inside the settings file besides these two options right here you can also uh, change inside the ubot file let me bring that back up for you inside your ubot file these different uh, variables that are set here like version, your web URL, trial, and subscription. Now in the actual URL sending uh, portion of this that makes the post to the actual server, this is the formatting that it comes out in. Now you can end up changing this in the navigation option which will actually be hidden inside a socket compartment when this is all completed so that the user does not actually see the web address that it's connecting to to help secure the system further and so that it doesn't have any eyesore or uh, any bad visual um, misinterpretation by the end user. Um, but these things here are the different things that are called inside the actual settings page and they are set here which will be sanitized uh, so that you don't have to worry about any type of uh, SQL injection, cross-site XML uh, injections, or anything of the, that nature. Um, this file here will just pretty much carry any functions uh, or settings needed uh, for the main front end. Right now it uh, checks for the actual IP or proxies um, and will we'll re report that in different settings up here. As you see it uh, asks for and gets the IP or proxy that they're using. Um, this way everything can pretty much be tracked and reported within the system. Um, if you happen to have any questions or suggestions, please email us at admin at botguru.net or message me on the UBOT Studio forums. Look for Lowrider TJ. And uh, that pretty much concludes this demo. Thank you.